and good evening to you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Marnie Hughes. We begin with some brand new video from the moment that nationwide manhunt for two fugitives ended. This is dash camera and body camera video showing the exact moment that the suspected murderer, Casey White, is handcuffed and then taken into custody after 11 days on the run with the former corrections officer he was with who helped him get out, Vicki White. Authorities say Vicki shot herself during that chase, right at the end of it. She died last night, and we broke that news to you right here on News Nation Prime, ending any hopes of getting true answers as to the grand plan in all of this. Why did she do what she did, and how did she get away with it for as long as she did? Tonight, as Casey White is being taken from Indiana back to Florence, Alabama, new pieces of this puzzle are starting to come together about what happened last night in Evansville, Indiana, and how this capture all unfolded. I'm going to be talking to Martin Keeley with the U.S. Marshals Office in a moment. We haven't heard from him yet uh, throughout this investigation. First, though, senior national correspondent Brian Enton is on the scene for us in Evansville. We're also going to be talking with Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton in a moment. Brian, let's start with you and what we have learned um, in the last few hours. Yeah, really just within the last hour, this new body camera video came out uh, and it's pretty disturbing, Marnie. It's disturbing because you see Casey White being taken away from the car and he is basically showing uh, absolutely no emotion, despite the fact that Vicki White just shot and killed herself right next to him. It's disturbing to see. Uh, meanwhile, today we're also learning more about what Vicki and Casey were doing in Evansville and we're learning more about their stay at this motel behind me. Dash cam video shows the moment police storm Vicky and Casey White's car. You see officers cuff White and lay him down on the hood of the patrol car. Then they put him down on the ground. Today we also got our first look at what was inside the getaway car. $29,000 in cash and an AR-15, four handguns, a taser, and multiple rounds of ammo. The Vanderburg, Indiana County Sheriff says it all would have ended much, much worse if they hadn't done the pit maneuver and stopped the couple. And we later found out, had they not done that, the fugitive was going to engage in a shootout with law enforcement. The sheriff says Vicki White was shot and killed. He says all indications are she took her own life, but he can't say for sure until the coroner finishes his investigation. This is what dispatchers were saying on the radio. We could hear her on the line saying she had her finger on the trigger. Shot victim. Female is still armed. Detectives say the couple was staying at this motel just across the street from the sheriff's office. They wore wigs when they were coming in and out. The manager says he never saw them, and it was a local person who rented the room. And they did not even use fake ID or nothing. Somebody else check in officially, and then they were visiting them technically. New video also coming from the car wash where Vicki and Casey were first spotted in Evansville. And you can see Casey standing behind the truck door. The manager of the car wash, James Stinson, believes he was grabbing a gun. Later in the video, you see Vicki pull up in this Cadillac and pick Casey up before they abandon the truck. Law enforcement relieved. It's all finally over. We've got the case solved. We've got a person deceased and we have another person in custody headed back to Alabama. That's my concern. And you heard the hotel manager talk about how it was not Vicky or Casey that paid for their room. Uh, that was certainly mind boggling. We followed up on that with the sheriff here uh, in Evansville. He says it was uh, a homeless person that Vicky and Casey paid uh, to go in and make the payment for their room. That way they could avoid being on the surveillance cameras. Marnie. Uh, Brian, I know that there are moments in that video that we chose not to show because it is too graphic. We know that Vicki, um, as they say, shot herself. But can you share with people at home a little bit more about what you did see in that video? And I'm curious, Casey White, as they take him over to the car, they kind of put him down on the hood of the car. They're arresting him. He's talking. Do we have any idea what he was saying? So a lot of the video, you, there's no audio, so we don't know what they're saying. Uh, one thing that stood out to me is just how big and tall uh, Casey White is. He is a very large man. We've been saying all week long that he's almost seven feet tall, but when you see him in the video and how much bigger he is than those two deputies, I almost would have expected like a swarm of deputies around this guy, but it was just these two deputies with this enormous man. You mentioned the part of the video that we um, didn't want to use. There is video of them going into the car. Vicki White appears 
appears to be lifeless, uh, and they have to sort of figure out how they're going to get the gun away from her. Um, and, and one of the deputies goes in and, and retrieves the gun, and then they actually pull her body uh, out of the car, which, which is quite disturbing to see. Yeah, and at one point, Brian, they say she's actually holding the gun because there has been some question, how do we know if she shot herself? Yeah, at one point they said that, um, and we know uh, that um, that the uh, they're going to do an investigation here. The coroner is doing an investigation. Uh, the sheriff here today said all the indications are that it was a suicide, a self-inflicted gunshot wound, but uh, they're going to wait to officially say that until the coroner's finished. All right, Brian Enton, live for us in Evansville, Indiana tonight. Brian, thank you. Joining me now is U.S. Marshal Martin Keeley. Uh, sir, thank you for giving us some time today. You're welcome. Happy to do it. So uh, tell me more about Vicki White's death. What more can you share that you've learned in the last 24 hours? Well, you know, we learned that she did uh, take her own life uh, during the, uh, the pursuit just before the vehicle was pinned and overturned uh, at the scene. Uh, we don't know a lot more about that. There was a uh, police dispatcher who was dispatching to units. I did hear that tape that uh, the female in the vehicle had a gun to her head and had her finger on the trigger. Uh, I think that was alert to the law enforcement officers that were in pursuit that, uh, again, these individuals were armed and very dangerous. We know that Casey White also had access to a gun. How can you be sure that he did not shoot her? Well, I can't, but, but I know that he made a spontaneous statement uh, at the time of, of the accident when uh, Deputy United States Marshals and Task Force officers were trying to uh, take Casey into custody. And Vicki was somewhat pinned in the vehicle. It took a second to get her out. Uh, at that time, he made a spontaneous statement that uh, he said, help my wife. She shot herself and I didn't do it. Uh, and again, we, there's not anything that would indicate to us that the two individuals were married, but he did make that statement. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the chase uh, and the crash that ensued. Um, who was driving the car? It's my understanding, and there's been different reports about who was actually driving the vehicle, but from my deputies on the scene, they indicated that they saw Casey enter the driver's side of the vehicle and that she entered the passenger side. In the press conference today, there was an indication that they were prepared for a shootout with law enforcement. What more can you tell us about that? We learned that uh, number one, Vicki White had been planning this escape with Casey White for an extended period of time, probably over two years. And certainly when someone pre-plans, uh, purchases weapons from a law enforcement perspective, uh, you know, we, we have to believe that they're extremely dangerous and, and that when confronted, they might try to use force against law enforcement. There had been some reporting that they may be in disguises as they tried to get away and escape. Um, have you have you uncovered any possible disguises that they may have had? Well, I know that uh, Vicki had uh, more than one wig and she, she, her hair was a different color at the time that she was observed by deputy United States Marshals. Uh, as far as Casey's concerned, it's hard to disguise an individual who's six feet, nine inches tall. Uh, I did a little informal research early on in this case and determined that uh, only 1% of the population in the U.S. is taller than six feet, four inches. So with his height and, and with the tattoos, he, he's someone who would stand out even with a disguise. Uh, and be easily recognizable uh, in the video from the car wash where the pickup truck uh, was discovered. It, it was clear that it was Casey in that video. He had on a cap, baseball cap, sunglasses, uh, uh, tried to make himself appear, in my opinion, very casual, but it was clear that it was him. The public, as you know, played a key role in this, getting their pictures out there, people calling in tips. Ultimately, it was a car wash manager, a man named James, uh, that really played a pivotal role in ending this whole thing. A lot of people want to know if James is going to get that reward money. You know, I, I can't answer that. I can tell you this, that uh, there, there are other things in this case that are not known to the general public. For example, 
we know that uh, where uh, Casey and Vicki purchased the, uh, the pickup truck that was uh, recovered from the car wash, we know that they paid $6,000 for that vehicle. We had the VIN number of that vehicle. Uh, we did a check of that VIN and determined that the police there uh, in Evansville had checked that vehicle uh, and that they had checked the VIN to see if it was stolen. Uh, we obtained that information even though the vehicle was not reported stolen and we were able to determine where that vehicle was at the time. So we went to the car wash uh, and there was an interview conducted with the owner. Uh, also, he had videotape that was very important because on that videotape, we could clearly see that Casey was in that area. Uh, from that, uh, we already had deputy United States Marshals from not only uh, Alabama, but from the Great Lakes Fugitive Task Force, which is operated by the Marshal Service, along with the Gulf Coast Regional Fugitive Task Force. They were already on scene and in the area, and uh, there was a lot of good, solid police work. Why Indiana? Some wonder they, um, you know, they were on the run for 11 days, but they stayed in one spot for a long time. What was it about Evansville that, that they chose to stay there as they did? I don't know that it was anything about Evansville, you know, uh, they may have been comfortable in that area. They felt like they were safe and secure in that area. Uh, you know, each time they moved or bought a car, that was another piece of the puzzle for law enforcement. And it's actually from their actions that we put the puzzle pieces together that ultimately led, led us to Indiana. And the question remains, who was the mastermind of this escape? Was it Vicki? Was it Casey? Was it a combination of the two? Um, what does your gut tell you? Uh, my instinct tells me that, that uh, obviously they had a plan that they'd put together, uh, they'd worked on together, but I think that uh, Vicki was the person who uh, committed the overt acts, purchased weapons, purchased a vehicle, staged the first vehicle that they escaped in. Uh, that she, uh, you know, knew the power of the authority that she had as an assistant director in the correctional facility and that she could move him out of that facility alone, which is highly unusual for something like that to happen. In fact, would be against any policy that I'm aware of in any correctional facility. So, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of speculation about it, but uh, I don't have the answer to that. U.S. Marshal Martin Keeley, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Now, the public and a lot of police work uh, helping this come to an end. Once again, Casey White set to arrive back in Alabama for his arraignment within the next several hours. A convoy of law enforcement are going to be taking him there. That is happening as we speak. I want to bring in now Lauderdale Sheriff Rick Singleton. He has been coming on Prime pretty much every day since this all started, the manhunt more than a week ago. Sheriff, uh, we appreciate you coming back. Uh, this nightmare over, at least um, this part of it. Um, you must be pretty relieved tonight. Uh, I am. We're very relieved that Casey White is back behind bars. Uh, you know, we said from the beginning what a dangerous person he was. I think that has proven out, uh, you know, the weapons they had. Uh, I think he stated to the sheriff uh, up in Indiana what their plan was. That they, they had planned to go out basically in a blaze of glory. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that we got him, that they, he was gotten off the street uh, without anyone getting hurt. Tough news, though, to lose your friend, your colleague, even though um, she betrayed your trust. Um, Vicki's death must be difficult for you. It is, you know, it, uh, with 107 employees and, and Vicki White is the assistant director of corrections with 48 employees in that division. Uh, she knew every single one of them. And uh, some of those uh, corrections deputies are young men and women in their early 20s uh, that looked at her as the mother figure. So she was a coach, a mentor, a trainer, and uh, in just some cases, a mother figure. She was family to a lot of you. Uh, Casey White's going to be back in Alabama here in the next couple of hours. Um, the initial plan was he was going to be heading back to that corrections facility uh, that you guys run. That plan has changed. Why? Uh, well, actually, that never was the plan. Uh, we uh, Early last week, we contacted the Department of Corrections and uh, already arranged uh, for him to be transferred immediately back to them as soon as his arraignment here was over. Uh, so that that's exactly what will happen tonight. When he gets back here in Florence, there's a judge waiting and uh, he will go straight to court 
Uh, he have an opportunity to meet with his attorney prior to that. And uh, as soon as that arraignment here is over, he'll be loaded back up and then transferred directly to the Department of Corrections. Mm. Uh, Sheriff, one thing stood out to me that the marshal said just a moment ago. When the chase ended, Casey White referred to Vicki as his wife. Uh, to your knowledge, did these two get married at some point in the last 11 days? Not that I know of, not that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, of course, uh, I guess it's possible. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, when he came out of the car making that statement, that's the first, uh, I think any of us had heard of it, of any such, uh, relationship as far as husband and wife. Yeah, well, that's a big question out there tonight for sure. You know, there is also um, the debate about who was the mastermind behind all of this. And with Vicki gone, uh, we will never hear her side of the story. Um, why that is important is the charges that he may face, um, after he broke out of prison, um, do you think that she single-handedly planned all of this? Was it a combination of the two? What does your instinct tell you based on what evidence you have? Well, I don't think necessarily she single-handedly planned it. I, you know, I wouldn't doubt that he had uh, some input. I do, like the marshal said, uh, she was the one that was in the position to facilitate it. Um, and she spent several days ahead of the escape uh, doing just that, you know, purchasing clothes for him to change into, purchasing a car, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking other steps of liquid, liquidating assets so that they had cash. Uh, and, and all that was on her, you know. Uh, uh, whether they got together and planned that or not, uh, but but she certainly was the one in position to facilitate it. Sheriff, you've been uh, very gracious with your time coming on. Every time that we've asked to take us along as, as you learn new information, uh, we'll continue to have you back. If you learn anything new about um, the relationship these two had, anything else you uncover, uh, thank you again for your time and uh, the police work and, and the public's help that led to this tonight. Thank you. And we appreciate what y'all did. We appreciate our investigators, the hard work they did, and of course the Marshall's Futures Task Force. Um, and, and, you know, the, the tips from the public. That's what got him off the street. Sheriff Singleton, thank you. All right. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.